Good evening. It's a good night, isn't it? In this lesson, by extension of being from here and being from the Bible, is for everyone. But I really want to focus tonight on a few individuals, the graduating seniors. And I hope that you will take this, uh, this, this relatively short message to heart, that it will impact you, and that it will help to guide you in the years to come. A couple of days ago, I petitioned this congregation for advice, advice that they would like to pass on to the seniors. And I received uh, quite a bit of advice. This right here is something that uh, mostly Alyssa, but I, I did help a little bit, I can say that this time, put together. And it's a packet, a pamphlet, that has the advice of everyone who sent something in on spiritual, relationship, life, and any other type of advice that was deemed worthy of passing on. Each of the seniors, you guys will be getting one of those. I hope that it will be beneficial to you all. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 17 is what Corey just read, and we don't have time to go over everything there in detail. In fact, we could spend the next hour just talking about verse 8. We're also not going to do that. But I want us to focus in for a moment on this idea of unity of mind. Unity of mind. And just think about that phrase for a second. It's hard to have unity of mind about anything. If I ask a benign question like, what's your favorite football team? We're not going to be unified in mind there. What's your favorite Bible verse? What's about the Bible? We're also not going to be unified in mind on what our favorite verse is, but we should be unified in mind on the teachings of God on what His will is for our lives. And a lot of the advice that was given was read your Bible, pray, surround yourself with Christians. And I'm going to submit to you that the only way to have unity of mind is to have a common denominator. You guys are graduating high school. Surely you know what a denominator is now. You must have a common denominator, and that denominator must be Christ. There is no other option. There is no other solution. There is nothing else that works. Your name is the numerator. Christ has to be the denominator. It has to be the same for everybody who professes to be a Christian. Because you are in Christ. You are a son of the one true king. It's very important that your denominator is Christ. And this quote here, I, I think is, uh, this is from one of the members in the congregation, and it reads, your home has been the center of your life until now. From your home and church, you have come to know God. As you leave these surroundings, please be aware that you are not leaving God behind. He will always be with you Wherever you go, draw close to God, and he will always be with you. you know, having unity of mind is, is a difficult thing to do, but something that makes it easier is what Peter talks about in the verse, the, the couple of phrases immediately following. And that is having sympathy, having brotherly love, having a tender heart. Sympathy, brotherly love, tender heart, these, these are all dealings with other people. And for the rest of your life, you're going to be dealing with other people, whether you like it or not. Sometimes people can be great, and sometimes people can be not so great. But your job as a Christian is to have sympathy, to understand that people are going through trials and, and, and tribulations, going through struggles. Your job is to be there to help them through it, 
to lift them up, to sit beside them and to cry with them, to laugh with them, to rejoice with them. Having sympathy in other people, but it's not just, it's not just saying, well, I, I feel sorry for that person. It's, it's doing something about it. I've gotten to, know, gotten to know you guys over the last couple of years that I've been here, and you all have such wonderful hearts, capable of so much compassion, kindness, and goodness. Use that to benefit others. Brotherly love, it's in the, it's in the name itself. Love your brothers, your fellow Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ. Treat them with respect, and with honor, patience, kindness. Can't imagine it. I guess we all can now after the pandemic, how difficult it is not having our brothers and sisters. How difficult it is not being around them. We, we do now know what it's like. Because it was forced upon us. I'll never take for granted that you have fellow brothers and sisters. Be kind and loving to them. And you're having a tender heart, it, it helps with all of that. Having a tender heart is, is, is vital to this idea. I would like everybody, if you could, to keep a thumb on uh, First Peter, but flip over to Colossians chapter 3 with me. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. We're actually going to start in verse 11 because Paul here is tying everyone together. He says, Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, city and slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Paul's talking to every single Christian that is here. And he goes on, he says, Put on them. In other words, wear. Put on them. Just like you put on your shirt. Just like I put on my jacket. You put it on, you wear it. Put on them as God's chosen ones. You are God's chosen ones. You are God's chosen ones, and in Christ you are holy, and you are beloved. And you are to put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Guys, I got to tell you all, that is not always easy. That is not always easy. But you are to bear with one another, and if one has a complaint, against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. As you go off to college, you're going to have many different friends. As you go into the workforce, you're going to have many different friends. You're going to have many different acquaintances, and some of them are going to do you wrong. Some of them are going to be there for a period of your life and then gone for the rest of it. Some of them are going to be there for the rest of your life. Whether or not they do you wrong, whether or not they treat you poorly, whether or not they treat you kindly, your responsibility is to treat them as you have been treated by God with kindness, with humility, meekness, and patience, and above all these, above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. It sounds trite, it sounds silly, sounds like something you tell a little kid, but all you need is love. It really is. When you have the love of God residing within you and when you share the love of God with others, that is all you need. Everything else falls into place. Love of God is it's powerful. Romans chapter 12 is where we're going to go next. <clears throat> rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, 
but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. You know, this piece of advice was given by another uh, member here. It says this, relationships is a word that applies to everyone you meet. Each person will contribute to your learning. Be careful to develop that relationship to get the most out of it. As I mentioned just a little bit ago, you guys are going to have opportunities to make lots of friends. You go off to a, a big school, you're going to have a lot of friends that you're going to be able to make, a lot of people you're going to come in contact with that you've never met before. Choose wisely. Choose carefully. You are going to become the people that you hang around with the most. Put yourself in situations that are going to cause you to succeed. Don't think you understand and know all of the things, because you don't. Nobody does. Never be wise in your own sight. Peter goes on to talk about having a humble mind. You know, I, I, uh, I feel like I rarely have a humble mind. That's something I gotta work on. And a good example of that, I, I think, uh, comes within the first couple of years of my marriage. Sorry, months. First couple of months of my marriage. I've only been married a couple of years. Well, the pandemic had happened, and we are spending all of our time with one another at the house. I learned real quickly the things that I should and should not be doing. And one of the little things that I learned uh, deals with laundry. You see, when I lived on my own, I folded towels however I wanted because I could put them where I wanted and I could make them fit wherever they fit and it just it didn't really matter. So I folded my towels. Two months in, we're folding laundry, folding towels, and here I am, minding my own business, folding my towel. She looks over at me, what are you doing? I said, folding a towel, I mean, it's, it's folded, right? Like that's, and technically, it was folded. I gotta let you guys know, just because you technically may be right, doesn't mean you're right. There are times in your life where you've gotta learn to let go of being right, just accept what is. I no longer fold towels the way I used to. It's not worth it. They fit in the place a lot better now, and most importantly, it makes her happy. We have to be willing to accept we don't know everything. We're going to learn. We're going to grow. We're going to be told you're wrong. You may be right. It may be folded. Doesn't mean that's how it needs to be. So just remember, even though even though you were right, sometimes it's just not worth the cost to be right. You know, I do want to make sure I, I make this point. As we're talking about some subjective things, and I, I want to make sure that I say this very clearly, truth is not subjective. There are certain things in life that it's not worth the cost to fight against. There are certain things in life that you have to hold on to. The Word of God, the Gospel, must hold on to that. You cannot stray from that. You cannot deviate from that. You have to hold on to the gospel. Read this quote. This is enjoying the struggle of life. Acknowledge that you don't have it all figured out. Lean on those who have gone before you for wisdom. They may not have the right answer, but they will help you to find it. Seek to do good in all you do. Remember what you stand upon, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is absolutely vital that you hold on to the word of God, that you hold on to it tight, that that is your foundation, it is what you stand upon, that it does not falter. Certain things in life, let it go. Hold tight to this. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42. We read about what Peter is talking about as, as, as in, uh, in verse 9. To 
remind everybody in verse 9, Peter says, Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you are called that you may obtain a blessing. And Peter, Peter's just talking about what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 5. He said, You heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. As we all know, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Verse 39, but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you. And do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. The world that we are living in now, I hate to tell you all, being a Christian is no longer popular. It's no longer chic. It's not the cool thing to do. Being a Christian is going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. People are going to make fun of you for believing in God. People are going to make fun of you for going to church Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights. People are going to make fun of you for what you believe. You're going, you're going to struggle with that. My advice to you on this, do not sink to that. Be better than that. If they insult you, bless them. They say something mean to you, you say something nice to them. If they make fun of you, you pray for them. You know, I see online, and I am, I am, I am guilty of it too. You know, we, we, we see things that, that we don't agree with, that we don't believe in, and, and we, we poke fun at it. We make fun of it. Our job as Christians is, is to proclaim the gospel and to bring more souls to Christ. And i got to tell you, nobody is going to come to Christ if they're feeling like they're being made fun of. They're feeling like they're reviled. A lot of you guys are about to go to a college campus where people are not going to believe what you have been raised to believe. It's not grounds to make fun of them. They may make fun of you. Let it happen. Don't do it back. Because you represent Jesus. You represent the Christ. And our responsibility is to bring more souls to him. And we share the truth in love. And a good way to do this is, is this piece of advice here, which is you be a great listener. We don't listen to respond, we listen to hear. Be slow to judgment and anger. And be quick to forgive. Last little bit that we're going to go to tonight before we close up. We've got just a little bit more. There's <clears throat> this idea of seeking peace and pursuing it. You know, in Romans 12, back to where we were, starting in verse 18. Paul says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, this is what I want you all to focus on here. Verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Having been through college too many times now, for those of you that know me, I have seen... Evil. 
I have seen sin, I have seen sin run rampant through people's lives and ruin their lives. And I am concerned and I am worried about the youth. Because y'all are entering a world that you have no knowledge about right now. Be on guard. Be ready. And seek peace in all that you do. I've got one more quote that I want to share with you. Uh, this is from uh, Mother Teresa. You know, I'm not uh, promoting all of her sayings and all of her quotes and all that she did, but I, I, do, like, I do like this one. People are often unreasonable. That's true. Illogical. That's true. And self-centered. That's true. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, <laughs> they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have. It may never be enough. Give your best anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Make no mistake, you are on this earth to do God's will. You are on this earth to serve him to love him and to love others. You're going to see all sorts of people as you go off into college. Some will be successful, some will fail. Some of the successful people will be sinning while they do it, and some of the people who are failing will be true and honest to God while they do it. What I don't want for each and every one of you for you to compare yourself with other people around you. Your path is yours alone. It's unique. It's different. Your successes, your failures, where you are in life cannot be judged by where somebody else is in this life. It should really be one marker in your life, and that is Christ. Measure your life according to Christ. Become more and more like Jesus every day, and in that, you will be successful. No matter what else happens in this life, if you become more like Christ every day, you will be successful. For the seniors and for everybody, you know, I love you all. And just know, you may be physically leaving here, but you are always welcome back. You have a home here. We love you all. If there's anybody who has any need, do ask that you come forward now as we stand and sing.